So leaving up from where we left in the last chapter, where we blocked in all the main proportions, such as just where the arms are, the general shape of the leg, general where the eye, ears are and all that, now we have to refine it. I would say this is probably the most important chapter in this entire series. Clearly, stuff like defining all the wrinkles and stuff like that in the end is also really important. But if this step here isn't done properly, nothing else is going to work. So what this step here is, is essentially re just refining the volume and making all the volumes nice and readable. Uh, up until this point here, we like we, we blocked in stuff like um, the rib cage and uh, the scapula and all the bone landmarks, and that's like the base of it. But they don't look don't look very good at this point here. It looks it looks very rough. So and th this chapter here is really the one where we take it from looking very rough to looking far more refined, and everything just builds upon this chapter as well. Like when we're doing the specific parts, such as um, defining the arms and the head and all that. That's essentially just adding some details to what we're doing in this chapter here. Yeah, it's interesting once you, from the previous chapter to this one, if you have the previous base, so with the base that Henning is starting out with here, once you have an understanding of how to make the forms flow together, this stage, which is very important, actually becomes, well, it's not easy, but it's like now you have a blueprint. Yes. Like now, you, now you're starting to color within the lines, and mm. if you have a good, if you have good mastery over your colors, this is going to be, it's going to be a fun part, yeah. I think, because the hard part for me at least is figuring out the base form to start with. Yeah. You know, you want to get the proportions right and like look and feel, and once that is done, this part here is where you can start to have fun with the design. Yeah. Yeah, it's true. We're really not too concerned here with the technical anatomy here. Like you can see I'm blocking in some stuff here and just kind of like continuing where we left off the last one, which was like getting the bone landmarks down. But it's it's way more the volumes of it compared to specific muscles. If you don't know your specific muscles at this point here, don't worry too much about it. It's when it comes to when it comes to muscles anyway, it's always covered by fat and skin. Mm. So like you, you should have a general understanding of what's going on there. But if the origin and insertion and all that kind of stuff is not 100% perfect, you can honestly get pretty far just by having the main volumes. Like if you look at your, your own arm or leg or what it might be, unless you are super ripped and like you haven't eaten for a few days or like you haven't, you're dehydrated and all that, you're most likely not going to be seeing a whole lot of like striation or even definition on it. Yeah, well, striation is really the, that's the very, very last step before you yeah. collapse from dehydration <laughs> and malnourishment. Really it really is. So it's just using the clay buildup brush here with the Alpha 06. I, and again, like you can use whatever brush you want to do, you want for this. I'm not really using a whole lot of smooth brush here and just keep going over the forms here. Yeah, this is something we've touched upon before in uh, some of our U YouTube videos of just regarding the the workflow of not smoothing. Mm. You know, just trying to use the brush and use the texture of the brush, the pressure of your brush yeah. to sort of technically smooth out the forms. Yeah. The nice thing about working this way is that you retain a lot of texture. Yeah. Um, this could be wanted or unwanted, depends on how you like to sculpt. But it's it just it's a way to make sure that you don't destroy forms needlessly. Mm. Like it, I, I think it's a very nice way of sculpting because it just gives you a lot more control. It can also it can take longer because you like soft pressure and yeah. you go over the forms. But it it does it does make sure that you get some solid forms. The way I like to think about it is, yeah, yeah, it takes a bit, it takes a bit longer, but it's like it's a, it's like a more refined process instead mm -hmm. of just going smooth brush and move brush and standard. All that's just more. It's just a bit more refined for me. Yeah. Also, just moving the hands down a little bit here. This is purely just to get some gesture to it. So this model here is the end goal is a production model, but there is a little caveat to it that. Yeah, it is a production model, but we are also making it a bit cooler here. Like yeah. there is more pose in it. Uh, for instance, um, you're going to see in a bit that we're going to pose the fingers up a little bit uh, just so we can just get a bit more gesture in it. It I, actually helps a lot when you're sculpting. Yeah. Just If you're just sculpting on a boring T-pose model, it's kind of hard sometimes to figure out, especially if you're concepting, what what is this character? Yeah. But if you can slightly pose the character and have that pose be part of the base, yeah. Um, I feel like it's a lot easier to 
really understand like more about the character. For sure. There's also like a there's also something to be said just for going a bit crazy with this, like actually posing in a properly wild concept sculpt. Because at this point here, that the, maybe you're working for a game or a movie, and uh, at this point the director hasn't really signed off on it. This is mm. kind of like you you want to present them with something. And you're not presenting them with a T-post model, which is just going to work perfectly fine. Uh, this is more like to get approval of that. Yeah, yeah, and like if you're presenting it to a director or a supervisor like that, if it can be, it can be hard to, like we said before, like figure out who the character is without mm. a little bit of gesture in it. Yeah. It might not be super rigging friendly, so you might have to, <laughs> you know, have that on a layer or something, so you yeah. can always go back to it. Yeah. Yeah, like ideally, like the hands currently, <laughs> before we start doing this, are rigging friendly. Yeah. What we're doing now is making them far less rigging friendly because now the rigger is, is going to be, be fighting against all kind of crazy stuff. Like there was already deformation baked into it. Like when mm. you, we were actually, we actually going to sculpt again like, compression of the fat of the fingers. But honestly, it looks better for this. And if in this entire series here, like this is not a, this is not actually going into production. So we can take some liberties here with certain things. Yeah, don't bend your fingers if you're in a production. No, keep <laughs> keep keep your fingers as <laughs> as straight as you can. You can you can have them like um like sometimes you've seen scans they're a little more relaxed. Mm, but it's like true. actually, but I see a lot of the scans. I think most scans I've ever worked with, people tend to like splay their fingers like mm. a lot, and it's, it actually is really weird for yeah. for the sculpt because your skin is stretched so much. Yeah, it's true. Yeah, I like to keep them like like like. Neutral. Actually, mm. let take back the statement I said before. We'll be keeping it as straight as possible. So, actually, let's discuss that a little bit. So, if if you talk, if you keep it as straight as possible, like they're perfectly splayed, then you're actually there is actually tension in it here. Yeah. You wanna you wanna have something like in between, actually, in between between perfectly splayed and like very relaxed. Just blocking in an atom here. Just um, getting some of the traps in here, and and while doing this as well. I, I actually have a lot of reference. Like I have reference of, uh, like we talked about in the last video, get reference if you don't. I, <laughs> I have an anatomy man on my desk, which is um, it's from anatomy tools. I bought it like 10 years ago. It's like this huge, I think it's like 70 centimeters and you can just spin it around, made from like a clay mold. And it's so useful. You can take off the arms and um, you can just really just f get a feel for the anatomy. I, I can't stress that enough. Like, ah. <laughs> uh. It always gets me every time people say they do stuff without reference, mm. and I mean they might, maybe they do, but most of the time it'll it'll show. Yeah. Unless you're some sort of savant that just remembers form perfectly yeah. and and knows how everything looks, yeah. yeah. then you might be able to get away with it. But us us mortals, yeah, um, I can't. It's I mean even in a professional setting, there's no, absolutely nothing wrong with using reference. No. It's highly encouraged because yeah. you want it to make it, you want it to look as good as possible. And the way you do that is by referencing. Yeah. Like you need a base. You need something to base your your sculpt on. And also, nature has already solved most of your issues. Like <laughs> yeah. when you're talking about like, like this guy here, like he's essentially like like bat, some some sort of bat for the head, and he has like uh, lion legs. Would just just do that. Just photo bash something together and steal reference from yeah. that. So in this stage as well, there is a lot of, of refinement here. We we'll just go to the lowest subdivision level and just straight up just moves in the move brush, just getting the volumes right here. If the volumes aren't right on the lowest subdivision level, the, the amount of detail is, is completely irrelevant. If you have pores or whatnot, you need to get the lowest level to work. It's something that's actually really helpful in the beginning because if like if you were to just um, dynamish something and you only have one level of subdivision, it's very easy to quickly like progress too fast into the higher levels. Yeah. Whereas if you try to, I mean, we talk about this a lot, but if you try to get the most out of your lowest subdivision level before you start moving on, yeah. it's really going to help you in the long run. And if you it keep is. the subdivision levels for a long, for as long as you can, you can always go back and e more easily tweak the yeah. lower levels, which is it's a lot easier to tweak form at a at a lower level than it is a high level. It really is. We actually at, uh, at some point as well, we will just going to be straight up dynamashing this once the main shape is working. But that once that is working, yeah, we're going to yeah. serum mesh it, and um, just to get some main topologies. So then we do get a lower subdivision level, and then just reproject the high res. Mm -hmm. We have a whole chapter on this, so which comes later on. Because th that way you do have the you do have the the high poly which allows you to do all the f all the fine stuff on top, but you also have the low poly which allows you to really just 
the find the gesture and all that. Yeah. You can also see how much I'm going between like the silhouette mode and uh, just like regular sculpting. Um, the silhouette view you can just access by hitting the V key. Just and it doesn't actually change the silhouette. Oh, it doesn't actually show you a silhouette. It just shows the black version of it. It just switches between the two colors you have to the left. But it's practically a silhouette view. Very practical stuff. An interesting thing that I see a lot with people when they, even even when they're on this stage, when they're when they're blocking in their anatomy, is that they'll tend to use the damn standard brush mm. a lot. They'll, I think maybe people think about muscles as a as a thing that needs to be carved in mm. instead of something that needs to be laid on top. You know, we we talked about that in terms of working from the inside out. Yeah. Where if you work from the inside out you would never really consider uh, like the pecs for the chest to be something that needs to be carved in, for example, mm. because that would just be a piece of volume that then gets added on top of the rib cage. Yeah. Because once you start carving in, I mean, carving in can be good as a reference. You're like, okay, here's the, here's the muscle, here's the separation. So it's not that you can't use the damn standard brush. It's just using it sparingly. Yeah. Like if you know how to use it properly, then it can be, then it can be really good. Yeah. But Thinking of the muscles as something that go on top of the skeleton instead of something that like carved in from the skin, I think that could help a lot of people. That is one of the things which improved my sculpting like dramatically. The moment I started thinking of of it from inside out, then then it just imp everything improved. Mm. You can also see here that f just all the forms are round. Like in that's what that's essentially what I'm trying to get here. Think of the torso as a fairly round thing. Think of the arm as a very round thing. It, it's more round than it's not round. Yeah. So same as you look at your arm as well. Like it's it's a very smooth and round surface. Even if you are super buff, like it's it's still a very circled thing. When it comes to we we just showed this before. Like uh, when it comes to the armpit. The armpit is actually quite interesting, which is very a, complex. Which is a sentence I thought I wouldn't really say. <laughs> Don't quote me on that. <laughs> but uh, one of the cool things about the armpit is that it's not like um, it's not that you adding the armpit. The armpit just kind of naturally forms by the lack of anything there. Yeah. It's kind of like the the pecs, the the pecs, the biceps, the triceps, the lats. Everything just kind of come. Like, just kind of like originates there or goes there. Yeah. And then it's whatever is left. It's just kind of, it's like, it's the armpit. It's the armpit. <laughs> so once you start thinking about that, that the armpit is, is the remaining thing mm. or the lack of something instead of being added to it. Yeah. So I'm just going over here now. Now we've removed the alpha. The alpha, like, yeah, this is what, this is how Morton professor sculpt here. Mm. We were talking about that before, that just without any alpha. And that's also an awesome way of doing it. I go between, like, having an alpha on, on it and, and uh, having nothing. Um, the reason I prefer to have nothing right now is the results are just cleaner. Yeah. There is less texture and you can just get, get just as good form from it. Yeah, it's just, it's just how you prefer the, look and feel the brush to be yeah. i mean you can achieve the same exact things with the with the two alphas yeah um because they're just like a, they're just slightly different in terms of softness and hardness yeah you don't see it when i'm sculpting i'm generally just working across the form so if the if the bicep goes up and down i'm working from left to right on it yeah, you run the danger of if you always work along the form. You can sometimes when you're blocking in mm. uh, major muscles, like you want to get the first part of the biceps down or the pecs. Just like you can go along the muscle, but you run into the danger of like getting weird stepping in your muscles, yeah. and then you have to go in and smooth it out anyway. So going across the form kind of solves that. Yeah. Uh, this video here is also sped up by around a hundred percent, so it's twice as fast as normally is. Oh, so you don't sculpt this fast. <laughs> oh, okay. Damn, I wish I'd sculpt, sculpt this faster. <laughs> it's but so it, weird watching yourself sculpt, yeah. like actually seeing, because it's we've been doing this for so long now. So when I'm sculpting like this, I'm not really thinking about speed or anything. It's just kind of like a process you're doing. It's like walking fast. Yeah. You're not really thinking about it. You're just kind of doing it. <laughs> oh, form. <laughs> mm. The forearm is so tricky. Yeah, that that, that it's just so 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 hard. To it's do like it. you think you understand the forearm, and then then you, you, it's some it's a puzzle you have to solve every single yeah. time. It's it's a really really tricky 
shape. There was somebody who said, if you think you understand quantum physics, you don't understand quantum physics. Same thing here. If you think you understand the forearm or the scapula or whatnot, <laughs> like the moment you think you get it, yeah. then somebody rotates their hand and you're like, oh man. I have to do it again. Yeah. There's also like just so much individual variation as well, which we've been talking a lot about in our videos as mm. well. Like for the forearm, there are like, there are like like tenants which some people just don't have due to genetics. Just like it's crazy stuff. They're just missing, yeah, missing parts of the anatomy just because the end biology was like, ah, it's just not strictly speaking. Uh, you don't need it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's optional. <laughs> so we're just really trying to get across here how important it is to to spend time on this stage here. Like obviously this looks like we're just kind of rushing through it. But this is because we've been just been doing this for a long period of time here. If, if this stage here isn't working, if you don't have clean shapes at this stage here, I just can't stress how important it is. Like nothing else is going to be working in in the future videos. And you can see like what what the whole thing hinges on is sort of the bony landmarks. Mm. The bony landmarks is really the reference point for where to attach muscles yeah. and how to build up the muscle around the the attachment points. Bony landmarks is one of those things where it's like if you have a puzzle and you don't know where to start, like mm. you always start with the corner pieces or like yeah. something that you, because like, okay, I can, I know I can only attach two pieces to a corner puzzle. Okay. So therefore it must be in the corner. It's the same thing with bony landmarks. Yeah. You know roughly what needs to connect to the bony landmark. Well, you should know what connects yeah. to the bony landmark. So it's a really good reference point. Yeah. It is. Whenever the video here is kind of like, um, like sometimes there is it's just kind of stopping a bit that is i have reference on the left side of the monitor here so i'm just kind of looking at some reference mm. or i'm just thinking <laughs> you actually just need time to think when yeah. something is happening here because there is a lot of form to evaluate so if you're just constantly going beast mode and just sculpting on everything here you just need you just need to just chill out a little bit evaluate the forms like you can also see like i'm just flipping the model crazy so i'm sometimes just working upside down just so you can evaluate it in a proper way It's hard. It's hard to always commentate on like the <laughs> yeah. thing because it's like sometimes there's just not nothing to say. So now it's like we were definitely sculpting more on this. <laughs> yeah, you can always be like, yeah. So uh, right now I'm using uh, this amount of sensitivity on the brush. So yeah. you clearly see that. And... Which is this exact same one I've been using for the last <laughs> six hours. <laughs> one thing though, which I want to say here was actually uh, you can see uh, in this video here compared to the last one, there's a new interface. Oh, what is this? So um, mm. we. Um, very important. So uh, in this one is just my custom interface, which is kind of like a work in progress. It's it's one of these you're just kind of chucking some stuff down there, stuff you use a lot. Like we use here mirror and weld, we use mirror, uh, auto groups. Some of these are just really handy. Uh, but then you can see in some of the later videos as well, I'm actually adding more stuff to it. Yeah. On the bottom left corner, you can see um, uh, enable customize. And that's just because it just allows you to customize your interface quicker. Instead of going to preferences, you can just go click that button, drag stuff into the interface, and uh, you're just good to go. I think a, a, like a UI is something that just, it, it just develops over time. Yeah, it and does. it develops for your specific needs. Yeah. I guess it's also interesting. I think, I think when I see people do UIs most of the time, I their custom UI is way more confusing than the standard ZBrush UI. Mm. I think because people go sometimes a little overboard with the yeah. customization, but like I need all the things. <laughs> yeah. Um, I think it's really worth like just doing some spring cleaning once in a while. Yeah. Like, okay, I never click this button anyway, yeah. remove it to really minimize the clutter. I was also doing some spring cleaning here, actually for this video here, because um, we've been using Maya 20, oh, sorry, ZBrush um, R7 or R8 before, mm. and uh, there are new features in this one. This is this is ZBrush 2018. So there are some just new features here, uh, which you can see on the top of the interface, such as uh, Dynamic. Uh, you have that, you have Sculptless Pro. So instead of, uh, instead of trying to find them in the interface and maybe I missed something, I'm just going, I'm just blitzing the entire thing and rebuilding it from scratch, yeah. which is why certain things here are missing. I was like, there is something missing in this interface. <laughs> because you see, you see there is a gap on the bottom left, which I knew I had something there, but I just wanted to organically see what I needed. Turns out what I was missing was see or measure, because mm. I use that quite a lot actually for concepting. The way I usually, the way I structure my interface 
is um so I'm right handed. Hmm. So I actually blitz away everything on the left, like your brushes, the, the you know the alphas, color everything. Hmm. And over there, over on the right, where you have your perspective grid and all that stuff, I replace all that by my custom items because hmm. my right hand is. For me, at least, it's easier when I'm right-handed to just go to the right, yeah. and then I just click the thing. So that's where all my custom stuff usually lies. Yeah. Yeah, it's pretty interesting how people just customize in completely different ways. Yeah. Uh, you can also see I removed a bunch of stuff here, like uh, on the right here. There, are, you have like a PBR button, and you have samples. I don't need that. <laughs> that's not something I need while sculpting. Nah. Also removed just a bunch of stuff on the bottom as well, just to keep it a bit simpler. The, the interface in ZBrush is already cluttered enough. Mm. So you can see one thing which is really useful is uh, on the very top, it's uh, top right, it's called backface masking. Oh, yes. That is super useful. It's found under uh, brush auto masking and then backface masking. This allows you to sculpt on really thin surfaces, like specifically what we're doing here now, which is the ear, because uh, that goes a bit crazy if not. Otherwise, it, it's just going to merge the two sides together yeah. and you're in a world of pain if that happens. The same with the uh, topological that you have up there mm. as well. Very practical so that you just retain. So you only sculpt on the topology. So it's like topology yeah. uh, dependent. Um, so you don't like sculpt on two surfaces that are close to each other because they don't share the same topology, for example. Yeah. Very handy. We, we used that actually quite a bit later on when we were doing like fingers, where if you mm. can work on the tip of one finger without uh, influencing the other ones. Yeah. So you have the move topological brush. But but I just I'm a simple man. I just want to <laughs> move brush with top logical. Click the button. <laughs> <laughs> I think an interesting thing is something that so before I'm sculpting a little bit on the on the traps and the shoulders, and that is something that people get wrong all the time. Mm. Like the relate it's it's because it's not you know not because they're bad. It's just the relationship between those muscles is, is just super tricky. Yeah. You've got the scapula where the traps attach and then you throw in the mix of your, your delts, sort of like touch it a little bit here and there. I would really recommend when people do this that they not just look at an anatomy book but try to find like a 3D resource. Yeah. If it's a scan or like Henning said, you know, the anatomy tools where you yeah. actually have a like an ecroche sculpt, yeah. something... Uh, 3D that you can that you can use as a, as a guide, because just using anatomy books on like by themselves can be it can be super useful, but it can be sometimes hard to translate that into form. Yeah, you know how does that actually lay on the form? It's because it's you're you're then translating 2D into 3D. Like yeah. a book is, you know, by definition 2D. It's a it's a flat picture, and now you got to translate that into something like. Something which is as complicated as like the scapular region and the traps mm. and all that, it is crazy hard to to get that right. So I'm using books as a starting point, and then uh, using like real world reference as yeah, much yeah. as I can. And 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 I don't I don't actually like using photos as much as I like using scans because photos yeah. have so much stuff going on in them. Mm. Like you have the the subsurface scattering, you have uh, the general the maybe soft versus harsh lighting, yeah. like just a bunch of stuff here. One thing that I would recommend is, um, I think you can find, I think this is like, it's legal and stuff to find this online. It's a Gray's Anatomy book. Mm. Um, so Wikipedia has a bunch of the pictures, but there's there's an index. Oh, I can't remember where it is, but if you just search for Gray's Anatomy book, G-R-A-Y, not to be confused with G-R-E-Y. Yeah, oh, not, the sh not, the t not the TV show. Not the TV show. Maybe I'm getting those mixed up again. <laughs> I can't remember which one. Is. I think Grey with an A is the correct anatomy yeah, one. Yeah, Grey with A is, is the US version. So that's maybe that's him. I yeah. don't know. One of them. Don't get it confused with the TV show. <laughs> it's actually it's, it's actually really annoying that mm. there's a TV show called Grey's Anatomy because <laughs> yeah. it actually filters a lot of the results from yeah. Grey's Anatomy book. Yeah. Um, so <laughs> but I would that resource is very good. Mm. It can sometimes be a little hard to find exactly what you need. Yeah. Um, you also have anatomy for sculptors. Pretty, oh, that's really good. It's pretty expensive, though. So yeah. um, you got to keep that in mind. Um, it's actually really pricey. Yeah. You also have a Scott Eaton's anatomy course, mm. which is also really pricey. But it's also it's also really good. That's how both of us at least got our foundation in anatomy. Yeah, yeah. Definitely worth it. So now you can see I'm using actually the move brush just with topological mode on. Like, I could have used topological move. But... <laughs> I don't know. actually know if it's lazier to do just the move and then click the topological <laughs> or I, 
I used yeah. to have it on a hotkey, but now I was like, ah, oh, now I gotta reassign a hotkey. So, uh, and uh, so I don't have hotkeys in Zebra. I just use the standard brush ones, and it's really annoying because they actually changed it. So, BMV used to be move brush. Mm. Now BMV is the move topological brush. Heresy. And BM. <laughs> B. B. I think it is. Is for the, I don't know. Something like that. It's set to my number three. <laughs> why, why would they change it? I don't know. It's just silly pixel logic. Fingers are also so hard to do. We did a free video some time ago about mm. like just doing hands. And man. Oh, we ran out of anatomy? We ran out of anatomy. <laughs> <laughs> it's so tricky. Yeah, it is It is really tricky because like hands is one of those things that it's like a sculpture in itself, mm. you know? like and, and, and hands add so much to your sculpt. Yeah. Like the gesture of a hand can change how the sculpt feels. Yeah. Completely. Like, obviously, if it's an angry face, it's still going to be an angry face. But depending on what he does with his hands, um, the, the the feeling of the sculpt can change a lot. There was a, speaking of the random anatomy, that was, we did a video on that, <laughs> which I thought was pretty funny. So Morton was doing a sculpt of a hand mm. and it, it looked fine. It looked like, sure looked like a hand. And uh, <laughs> one of the comments was, it's all out of anatomy. I so. So I'm like, I think what he was saying was the anatomy is wrong. The way we interpreted it was that um, you just uh, need to fuel up an anatomy here. <laughs> I wish I had more anatomy, though. <laughs> yeah. That would, have, that would have been great. Do you have any anatomy pills? We're yeah. sorry, we're, we're out of that. <laughs> I'm pretty sure he meant that we ran out of anatomy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm going gonna, gonna to get the literal meaning of that. <laughs> so <that's laughs> I don't understand metaphors here. <laughs> <laughs> when it comes to fingers as well, they're so tricky. Like, yeah. they're just... Really tricky, and you just gotta spend proper time on them here. Because if you don't, they're gonna look weird. Like if you want your hands to look proper, you would ba you basically spend as much time on your hands as you do the rest of the body. Yeah, because it's just it's like I would I would split it into hands, face, body, mm. and then like with a little time extra for feet. Yeah, you know, um, yeah. feet is something that gets neglected a lot. Yeah. But no one cares about feet, so that's why. We just put boots on it. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine if he had boots. <laughs> give him give a pair of sandals. Oh, man. Um, but yeah, so it's it's uh, structuring it like that. That's at least how I usually think about it in my head because mm. I know which part takes the most time. Yeah. And uh, each finger is just... It's so individual what happens to fing from finger to finger. Generally, you know, they, yeah. they share the same shape and the same form. But... There can be so much variation in there. Yeah. Some people have six fingers. Some people have four fingers. Yeah. <laughs> There's also a lot of story you can tell there. Let's say somebody's missing like two fingers. Like uh, that, that's what they're doing in the first Assassin's Creed where they're like, sorry, you got to chop off your fingers to use this weapon here. <laughs> like it, it just, you can tell a lot of stories just through hands or <laughs> the amount of fingers you have. Can you imagine the generation after that? The first generation that didn't have to cut off their fingers. <laughs> yeah. are like, we could have just moved our wrist. Yeah. Why didn't we think about this? In the this? second game, they're like, I don't know, do I have to cut off my fingers? No, 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 you're fine. We we just made it better. <laughs> we don't do that anymore. No. <laughs> you just uh, move your hand. <laughs> <laughs> so the cool thing about fingers as well, or hands, is uh, most people have them. <laughs> so... You, you can, probably have them. You probably do have fingers and hands. So whenever I'm looking at reference like this, you can see here I'm looking at... It's a left hand I'm sculpting. <laughs> because I'm looking at the left hand. I'm sculpting with the right, and I'm looking at the left hand. So I'm, I'm just posing up the hand the way it is. They're like, I'm not actually looking at external reference for it, because I have the best reference in the world, like, attached yeah. to me. <laughs> yeah, my girlfriend actually made a point of that, that all the hands that I sculpt kind of tend to look like my own hand. <laughs> yeah. So... Which could be both a good and a bad thing, but just like it's also important to look at other people's hands, yeah. just so you get like a better repertoire of it. Yeah, yeah. Although particularly if you're doing like um, like a like a female sculpt or is a male sculpt. Like yeah, I wouldn't look, use my hands. No, it looks very. So you can use it as a basis. Yeah. But uh, so yeah, this is just blocking everything in here now. Uh, after this, we're just going to be doing the specific parts of the body.